one gram of pure gold is worth $41. One gram of insulin is worth $7,850. I know. <laughs> Meaning that insulin is almost 200 times more expensive than gold. No one mugged me on the way out. <laughs> My sister was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes a few days before she turned 8. As with all type 1 diabetics, it didn't happen because of any choice she made. Type 1 is the result of an autoimmune disorder, which is where the body accidentally attacks some of its own cells. In this case, the targeted cells are the cells that produce insulin, and insulin is the protein that allows our bodies to convert food into energy. No organ in your body can function without insulin. So the only treatment for type 1 diabetes is insulin replacement therapy, where the person must inject themselves with insulin so their bodies can absorb sugar and produce energy. I was visiting my family last Christmas when my mom brought up some news articles that she and my sister had been reading about insulin prices rising above what anyone can afford. That's a huge concern for my family, because my sister needs insulin to live. It really scared me, so I decided to start researching what the problem was and how I could help fix it. I discovered that there are over 1.25 million Americans with type 1 diabetes, and 40,000 more are diagnosed every year. Every drop of synthetic insulin in the United States is produced by just three companies. What's more is those same three companies also control over 90% of the entire world's insulin market and it shows. Insulin prices increased almost 300% between 2002 and 2013. And the list prices of competing insulin brands continue to rise together. As a result, some type 1 diabetics are rationing their insulin because they can't afford to pay what others think their survival should cost. Studies performed by Yale last year found that 25% of type 1 diabetics were using unhealthily low amounts of insulin to save money. That's very bad. If a diabetic doesn't get enough insulin, it causes damage to every system in the body and eventually results in death. So why is it so expensive? I never found an answer. Many fingers have been pointed, mostly at insurance companies and the three manufacturers, but, th but it's all speculation. So I started looking at the production process of insulin, and I learned that it is and always has been very expensive. See, they used to extract animal insulin from butcher scraps back in the 1920s, but that method was extremely inefficient, with over two tons of pig scraps yielding less than eight ounces of insulin. But that was the only way to get it until 1978, when scientists began producing synthetic insulin inside bacteria instead. And the process has remained virtually unchanged since. Here's how it works. Scientists take the human insulin gene and break it into two pieces. Then they put the pieces into some bacteria and grow them in these massive metal tanks until there are billions of them. Once the tanks are full, they drain them and extract the insulin pieces. Then they put the two pieces together with a chemical treatment, purify them again, bottle them up, and ship them to pharmacies. So why is insulin produced in two pieces? Because this is what insulin looks like when it's first created in the cell. And this is its functional form after being processed by the cell. Notice how it gets folded and the middle part gets cut out. Wouldn't it be way more efficient to just produce these two pieces separately and then bind them together after instead of putting all the time and resources into making this middle part just to cut it out? That's what the scientists thought, and that's what they did. And it's a decision that would take more than 30 years to regret. See, this unprocessed stuff is called pro-insulin, which is just inactive, immature insulin. Pro-insulin gets processed by three proteins called PC1, PC2, and CPE, which are the things that do the cutting to make mature insulin. Then this whole mixture gets secreted into the bloodstream. In the past, this is where we stopped looking. We thought that this was simply the process to produce mature insulin, and that these other three proteins in the middle part, which is called C-peptide, by the way, we thought those, those proteins were just byproducts of the reaction. 
But this is what we're regretting from all those years ago when we eliminated those proteins. See, diabetes has always been accompanied by other health complications, no matter how good a diabetic is at regulating their blood sugar. These other health problems will happen eventually, regardless of how hard they work and how much they punish themselves. But recent research has proven that these other th four proteins actually have functions in the body. And when some of these proteins are given to diabetics alongside their insulin, just like the pancreas does it, those other health complications are not only avoided, but they're reversed and resolved. C-peptide alone has been proven to heal kidneys, eyesight, and nerves that have been damaged in association with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Because the reason those were damaged in the first place was a lack of C-peptide, since it's not included in synthetic insulin. C-peptide replacement has also increased healing factor, blood circulation, and sugar diffusion into muscles and organs. Who knows what other health complications could be resolved if all of these proteins were injected alongside insulin, just like our pancreas does it. The great news is that it might be possible for us to do just that. Let me introduce you to my colleague and longtime friend, Physarum polycephalum. <laughs> No, I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> I've been studying Physarum since I was 10 years old, and I've been fascinated with it ever since. Physarum is astonishing because it's a massive, multinucleated, single-celled protist, which means that everything you see here is just one cell, but it has billions of copies of its DNA and all of the protein production machinery to match. Physarum is literally a protein-producing machine. And the best part is that it will just keep growing as long as you give it food, water, and space. Wait, could it grow to fill one of these? That's when it hit me. I had been researching how to fix this problem for so long, and the answer was literally sitting in my dresser. That's, that's where my Fisarum lives. <laughs> and I don't hide the socks, right? <laughs> Could we solve the insulin crisis by producing it in Fisarum polycephalum? Well, Fisarum is a eukaryote, which means that Despite our obvious differences, it's like us. It's an animal, not a bacteria. It produces proteins in the same way as we do. We simply need to take the whole insulin DNA sequence this time and introduce it to Physarum, along with PC PC1, PC2, and CPE. Physarum would then produce insulin exactly the way that our pancreas does, and the insulin that it produces would be the exact same as what the pancreas produces. This insulin could be cheaper, Production could be much faster and less complicated, and most importantly, the insulin it produces could heal diabetics, like my sister, of the other health complications that before now, we couldn't do anything about. Another possible result of this new technology is the fire machine, a machine that would allow diabetics to produce this better insulin in their own homes. This machine would function like a coffee maker. Just input when you'll run out, and the machine will start itself up, produce and purify the insulin solution, and fill your bottles right when you need them. This could eliminate concerns about natural and financial disaster, restricting a diabetic's access to insulin. This also gives insulin production to the people, which I hope will stop any group from abusing that power ever again. Because between June and July of this year, United States News covered four type 1 diabetics who died because they couldn't afford their insulin. And their families would like for you to know them.
This is Kayla Davis. She was 28 years old. This is Josh Wilkerson. He was 27. This is Jada Lewis. She was 24. And this is Jesse Radcliffe. He was 21. And that's why we need this. Guys, that's why this is important for them and for my sister and for everyone who's scared. We need hope. And this, this just might work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.